know how to find the oxidation number or charge of ions. We're going to talk about, you know, what the purpose of that is. So once atoms have a charge, they're going to bond together, and we call that ionic bonding. When two different ions, when a metal and a nonmetal come together because they have opposite charges, they're going to bond together. And so what's going to happen to electrons? Some electrons will be given away, some will be taken, and then because they're positive and negative ions, they will attract and they're going to form an ionic bond. And I'm going to show you today kind of how that works with some Lewis structures, charges, and how we're going to diagram some ionic bonds. So we're going to start here with lithium and chlorine. So your first step when drawing an ionic bond is to draw the Lewis structures for each element, element symbol. So we have lithium and we have chlorine. So if I find a lithium on the periodic table, it's right here. It's in group one, which means we have one valence electron. So we know we start on the right-hand side. There's one valence electron, and that's it for lithium. Let's find chlorine in the periodic table. Chlorine is right over here. It's in group 17, which means it has seven valence electrons. So we'll do that. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now remember, kiddos, the goal of every element is to have that full outer level of valence electrons or to have that magic number of eight. So here we have our metal, lithium, and our nonmetal, chlorine. So you can see here, you can kind of figure out which element's going to lose electrons because it's closer to zero and which one is going to gain electrons because it's closer to that magic number of eight. And so once we draw our Lewis structures, our next step is to show the transfer of electrons because that is what happens during ionic bonds. There is a transfer of electrons from one atom to another. So we'll do this by showing just the transfer of electrons from lithium over to chlorine. Lithium needed to lose one, chlorine needed to gain one, and now both elements are stable, and I have to say they're happy because they have the correct number of valence electrons to make themselves stable. Lithium lost an electron, and when you lose, again kiddos, electrons are negative. When you lose negatives, you become positive. So lithium lost an electron, it's positive one. Chlorine gained, a gained an electron, now it has an oxidation number of charge of negative one. When we draw ionic bonds, our charges must add up to zero. Overall, our charge must be zero. We have one, plus one and minus one, those would cancel out. So our charges add up to zero, we're good. Our next step is to write the chemical formula for lithium and chlorine. You always write your cation symbol first. Remember cations? Cations are positive because cations have pause. So you write your Li. We have, I just see we have one atom of lithium. And we write our anion second, which is chlorine. And we only have one atom of chlorine. So Li, Cl. And when we name ionic bonds, kiddos, when we name ionic bonds, the cation is listed the exact same way it is in the periodic table. The anion, in this case, the second one, the anion, chlorine, we have to shorten it and add IDE. So we shorten the anion and add IDE. So when lithium and chlorine bond, they form uh, one atom of lithium, one atom of chlorine, a compound of lithium chloride. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Lithium chloride would be your ionic compound. We'll try one more. Let's say we have sodium and sulfur. So again, our very first step is to make sure we draw our Lewis structures. We find sodium. Sodium is right here. It's an alkali metal. It is in group one, which means it has one valence electron. So if we're drawing our Lewis structures, sodium has one. 
Now we need to find sulfur. Sulfur is over here. It's a nonmetal. It's in group 16. It's got six valence electrons. So we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we can tell right now neither of these elements, neither of these elements are going to be happy. So we got to figure out who's going to lose and who's going to gain. Now we know sodium only has one valence electron. It's closer to zero. It's going to lose. It's a metal. Sulfur, a nonmetal, has six. It's closer to that magic number of eight. It's going to gain electrons. So, but you see, it's not going to quite work out here. Sulfur needs two. Sodium needs to lose just one. So it's not going to work out. But we'll see what happens, though. So sodium obviously would give one to sulfur. Now sodium is happy. But sulfur needs one more. So in this situation, what we have to do is we have to actually have we have to have two sodium atoms to make sulfur happy. So I draw one more sodium atom and then draw the transfer of electrons because ionic bonding is the transfer of electrons. Somebody's losing, somebody's gaining. Now this sodium's happy, this sodium's happy, they're both good. Sulfur now has a full outer level of eight, it's good. We should be done. And kiddos, we keep going until everybody's happy. So let's find our ionic, the next step is find our charges. Sodium lost an electron, it's a positive one charge, cation. This sodium lost an electron, it's also a positive one charge. Sulfur gained two electrons, so it's a negative two charge. Again, your charges must add up to zero. We got two pluses over here, minus two. They do cancel out, so we're good. Our last step here is to write, write and name our chemical formula. We always write our cation first. So that would be Na, sodium is a cation. I'm going to say it again, guys. Cations are positive because cats have pause. So cation goes first. How many sodium atoms do we have? Well, we have one sodium atom here, and we have one right here. So we have two sodium atoms. We use a little subscript two there. And our anion goes second. We have just one sulfur atom. So Na2S is the formula when sodium and sulfur bond. Last step is to write the chemical, uh, write the name of the ionic compound. And so again, the cation is just the exact same name of the periodic table. Your anion, your second one in the chemical formula, we have to shorten that and add the same last three letters, I'd. So cation is sodium, anion, we, we shorten it to sulf and then add IDE. Sodium sulfide would be the name of that compound. Kiddos, what I would like for you to do is do the exact same thing, but I would like for you to try to show sodium and fluorine making an ionic bond and aluminum and chlorine making an ionic bond. Draw these out, try to draw the, write the name and the formula, and we will check those in class.